<laughs> hey everyone, welcome to the uh, weekly Q and A and live streams. I'm Mick Solomons, the developer of the Starting Strength app, and uh, guess who's back, everyone? You can't imagine. Is it me? Yeah, it's you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't imagine how many people have like complained to me that you're not on this. You haven't been here for the last couple of weeks. You know, I've, I've got fans. They're loyal. There's they not are. many, but they are loyal. You're the man of the people. Um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, anyway, it's good to have you back, man. How have you, how have you been? I guess you've been busy with all the stuff going on at uh, Wichita Falls. Yeah, yeah. There was about four weekends in a row. I was just, I was working constantly. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm glad to uh, ha have had a weekend off. That's yeah. Nice. Are there any updates on the uh, production schedule for the, the cooking for the recipes? That's super yeah, exciting. Yeah, we have one, we have one um, coming up um, tomorrow, actually. He's making... Um, no, um, I don't even know if I should say. It's hamburger steak. That's what he's making. <laughs> No, okay. <laughs> yeah. It was a good episode. It was fun. Rusty, it was fun. help me out here. When I was there in December for the seminar, uh, someone, yeah. I think it could have been Steph, made um, cookies with mm -hmm. pecans or walnuts on top. Do you know what yeah. those were? Uh, I don't I don't know exactly. What, I remember her making those, but I don't remember exactly what was in them. I wrote on the comment thing. I was like, can you please post this recipe on the website? No one ever did. <laughs> You know, what would be good, see, Rip doesn't make sweets. He refuses to make sweets. He just, he's not, uh, really? he doesn't like sweets. Um, he hates donuts, which is insanely weird to me. That's the only person <laughs> I've ever met that has, like, lit literally hates donuts. But um, it would be good to have Steph on a show and have her um, do some baking. I think that'd be a good idea. I'll run that by Rip. Yeah, we can get uh, Steph and Bree on the same on the same show. Let's see how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> I like getting Bree on anything. <laughs> Surprising. I no, but those cookies that. were amazing. You gotta, oh. you gotta track down their recipe. Oh, what, what? Anything, anything um, Steph cooks is amazing. I mean, she she can bake. She knows how to bake. Like both, they're both pretty good cooks. Um, mm -hmm. I watched a video of Bree like lifting boxes and packing boxes in the warehouse for about three and a half hours the other day. That was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> in a crop top. <laughs> I mean, I feel she like she is. We, uh, she's getting jacked. She, she is, is getting real jacked. She she um singled one thirty five, I think, for six reps the other day. Nice. Yeah, yeah. She did six singles at one thirty five. So and she squatted three hundred. So That's she's right. getting real freaky strong. Yeah. I can't wait till for I see her. For reference, the first thing is the press for the singles. Yeah. Just so people yeah. know. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> that's not the deadlift. <laughs> Bree's actually in the comments. She's already like posted a couple of uh, little uh, bicep flex biceps oh so so she heard me bragging about her yeah yeah her ears are uh, tingling i think i mean proud too bad her person too bad her personality sucks can you just come <laughs> on the stream brie we'll send you a link you can just come straight in say hello and then leave we'll see mm -hmm. if she uh see if she replies to that We're oh i would love if she do that she won't she won't but it would be great if she did yeah yeah um yeah, so we already talked about Chase's uh, 405 press last week, Rusty, but you were there. Mm -hmm. You saw it. Do you want to yeah. give us your uh, point of view? Well, like, um, the, that first one, I don't know if you said, the first one just crushed him. He didn't He didn't hit it right, and it just came right back down on him. Um, I have never heard that gym that loud, for one. That was um, insane. Um, for two, it should have been red-lighted. He knows it. Everybody knows it. Um, it was funny, though, because I was judging maybe six people before him, and I had to leave to go start coaching my clients who were warming up. And uh, Rip had Nick go around and tell every judge, hey, you be real strict on him. Do not green light him unless it's a green light. Like If it's, if it's not perfect, red light it. So um, the guy relieved me. I said the same thing to him. I was like, hey, you know, make sure you red light him if it doesn't go. If, it's, if, it, if anything's off, red light it. He said, oh, yeah, of course, I'm going to red light it. I'm going to red light it. Well, it happens, and, of course, whenever he does his layback, it, like, sinks down another three inches, and then he starts pressing it back up, which, again, even if it would have been all red lights, everybody would have been stoked about it. But he gets two, two whites and, uh, and one red. Bree was the only one that gave him the, gave him the red. <laughs> And uh, Rips, what did Rips say? He said, um, Bree's the only one with any integrity around here. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was, um, it was impressive. It was super impressive. Yeah. I mean, I feel like it's actually hard. I mean, that bar drops three inches, like 405 drops three inches and he presses it back up. I feel like that's actually... 
Well, it wasn't that it dropped. It was whenever he went into his layback, the bar kind of stopped moving, and he just laid back with it. And uh, then it came right. down as he yeah. laid back. But as soon as he got his layback, it just started cruising. Mm-hmm. So Cruising. It was it was awesome. I mean, you, w- whether it was red lights or not, he yeah. stood there and pressed, pressed 495 pounds. That he got her over his head. Yeah. Um, Rusty, I don't know if you heard Chase talk about it, but you know what he said it was? It was all the ab wheel. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> you know he said all is. the ab wheels just rep after yeah. rep <laughs> that dude is insane i've seen him do an ab wheel where he would stand straight up bend over put the ab wheel on the ground go into a full extension plank pull himself all the way back up to where his his legs are straight up and down and then stand back up his, chase. his abs are just yeah it's chase yeah it's absolutely insane I think last week we were talking about, uh, Phoebe was talking about the reason she got into starting strength was because she saw Chase's butt on Instagram one day. <laughs> she goes, I need a butt like that. <laughs> uh, uh, Jeff Riggins, hitting lateral raises in the chair for you, Alex. There we go, Jeff. Jacked and tan, man. Yeah. Keep up the good work. He also said something about he thought this was meant to be posted tomorrow, but we're actually, we're actually moving back to Monday evenings. So... Uh, to try and get rusty on so um you know i had a lot of pressure on me to get rusty back on it's just i'm just on a sweat here a bit it's just uh we've got mailbags man coming the, to my house. those those, my those four <laughs> those four guys they must have really been it's on you it's all dudes, <laughs> all dudes. <laughs> it's actually it's actually just chase he's just emailing Mick over and over to try and get the spot back he's got four he's got four different email yeah. accounts i want to believe that but chase's <laughs> internet connection is so shit that i don't think he <laughs> i think they're probably all still sitting in his outbox well, it's probably it's not just his internet; it's probably his computer too. I think I'm pretty sure it was made in like 1992. It's all it's all for a guy who's 21. It's um, it's pretty shameful how bad he's at technology. Yeah, <laughs> I actually thought we should have live streamed him moving apartments today. I just want to see him like carrying cat like sofas up the stairs and oh yeah, you know, like just like one Arnold. hand, you know, just Arnold. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, all right, well let's rip into some form checks. We've got ACHC. Can you guys see that okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I see it fine. <clears throat> well, no, first I thought it was a press. Are... What's that? I thought it was going to be a press. No, I thought this, this was, was yeah. a surprise. <laughs> um, one thing, man, you got to get some lifters. That's going to be the first thing. Um, your feet will thank you for it. <clears throat> At the uh, top of the squat, you need to stand up all the way. You're staying bent over. That's going to put a lot of stress on your low back that doesn't go away. And that's going to start wearing on you pretty quick. A, you're going to get fatigued quicker. B, you're probably um, going to start developing some some low back pain from that. So at, at the end of the rep, stand all the way back up. It's probably one of those I things did, where he's fairly new to low bar squatting. I, rem- I remember mm-hmm. the first time I ever low bar squatted, I felt like it. Yeah, you're afraid it's going to fly, yeah, yeah. It's gonna fly off. Yeah, the, the bar back, is yeah. too low here. <clears throat> mm-hmm. It is. Oh, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. I think that's what's going on here, man. What was it, AC something? AC, A- A-C-H-C. NH? AC. H-C-H-C. Yeah. H-C-H-C. Um, but uh, yeah, so the the bar here is too low, and that's causing you just to be afraid of standing up tall at the top. You know, So even with the bar being an inch and a half too low, when you unrack the bar, it was still you were still standing upright, and it was totally fine. The bar didn't fall backwards. Mm-hmm. Just get there in between your reps. Stand up tall. Um, see if yeah. you can move the bar up a little bit. It should feel like it's sitting in a notch, not just like pushing into flesh. It should feel like there's kind of a groove there for it to dial in on, especially if you're uh, not a super big guy. Um, and then I would get some lifters. I would prioritize the rest of it before that, though. So, Yeah. Um, the, the way to find out where that bar is supposed to be is if you reach over your shoulder, you can feel that bone ridge. That's um, You want that bar to go right below that and above the meat of the deltoid, right between those two spots. It'll fit right there perfectly, and um, you'll be strong right there. Yep. All right, ACHC, thanks for the video. Uh, Jeff Riggins said, Chase got that Biden laptop. <laughs> I sure hope not. Yeah, he's a, he's a maybe that's why Chase couldn't make it today. He's actually uh, he's in he's in he's in jail right now. <laughs> Nobody's gonna go to jail for that. Nobody. Yeah. Cheers, cheers to that, Rusty. <laughs> what are you uh, drinking, Rusty? I was, is that I was a nice about to go off. Coke? I was about to go off. What's that? You yes, go off, Queen. A, what the, what is it? 
It's just a Diet Coke. That's it. No, okay. There's no alcohol in it at it's all. It's the nectar of the gods, really. <laughs> on the on the deepest cuts, it's a, a liter of Diet Coke a day. Sometimes. Too. <laughs> so, so are you a, a liter soda? I have this debate with people quite often. It's an important debate: Pepsi Max versus uh, Coke Zero or or Diet Coke. What's your, what's your preference? Who drinks Pepsi? I drink Pepsi I don't know Max. Any, I don't know anybody who drinks Pepsi I drink other Pepsi. than I guess Australians. Could be a shitty Australian thing, man. It's Pepsi Max, man. It just it just, ta- it just tastes better than uh, than Coke Zero or Coke Diet Coke, whatever they call it. I just I, well, I don't drink Diet Coke in general. If I'm gonna mm-hmm. drink a Coke, which I don't often, it's got to have the real shit in it, the real sugar and cocaine. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jeff Riggins, what's up, Russo? Oh, okay. It's, what's up, man? These, these guys just having their own conversations in these chats now. It's just uh, <laughs> it just descends That's into fine. political debate. In your own and chat room. Excellent. Posting. Excellent. Yeah. Yep. Hey, guys, let's talk about um, Biden's laptop and how um, that just kind of got swept under the rug. Yeah, talk about that, and guys. And go. Yep. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Um, Adam Abikan. Let's see what old mate Adam's got. He's in, he's in Converse. Yeah, he's, yeah, yeah, he needs to get some lifters. You're lifting in Converse, and that's not good. That's another guy that looks like he's lifting in, in jail. I've had a few of these the last couple of weeks. This is a, I, I don't know why, but a lot of gyms have been going kind of with this more gray metal aesthetic. But it's just like, it's not like a hardcore powerlifting gym. It's just kind of like this weird urban outfitters. Clean. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah Any time fitness or something. Um, but yeah, so I mean, even if we don't take the barefoot first lifters argument, lifters would be helpful here just so you can get more of an inclined uh, foot. So it's just like yeah. getting your knees forward is a big issue in this squat. Um, you're not really hitting depth, so having that extra elevated heel would be super helpful for you here, man. Um, I would widen up the stance a little bit, uh, shove the toes out a little bit more. Uh, think about dropping your butt straight down in between your heels. Uh, I think the upper back is soft, and it's causing a lot of problems, but it's hard to see exactly where you have the bar from this angle. Yep. Okay, Adam. Uh, <clears throat> so, yeah. Von Meister, how do you guys feel about programming heavy singles followed by back sets of 20 to 25% for intermediate lifters? Depends on the lift. Hugely depends on the lift. Um, press, sure. Deadlift, no. Yeah, deadlift needs to stay heavy. Okay. Yeah, but I mean, like, if you are, if you're actually strong, like, a heavy single is going to fucking tank you for the session. Yeah. You know. So oh, it's we're just talking like about heavy singles. Not, okay. Yeah. He, so he's saying programming heavy singles. So it's not. Uh, so it's like. Yeah, yeah. Press, yeah. press is probably the only thing um, I would program heavy singles with for intermediates. Um, he's saying for the squat. S- for squat. Not worth um, it. No. No, no, mm-hmm. I wouldn't do it. Um, so like if you are, if you're starting to press, like let's say that if you are, if you're still outside of your taper and you know, you're planning on peaking soon for a specific event, sure, start doing them just for a practice function, just for the sake of practice, right? Um, but make sure they're not super heavy. You still feel like you can hit a decent bit after that. But like if you, for some reason, just decide to be practice your singles, you know, every single workout and they are actually heavy near 100%, you're just going to ruin the rest of your uh, back off work. And then what will likely happen is that as the weeks go on, you will be doing less and less work and then you're just going to get weaker. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Oh, the thought of heavy squats, like sing- heavy squat singles. Ugh. No, yeah. it, it, I would much rather do a balls out heavy single or maybe even two or three heavy singles then do a heavy set of five oh, that's five. true as well man heavy they set all suck squatting right. sucks just yeah. generally like I, mean, <laughs> I feel like i'm the only person in this community yeah. who enjoys exercise i don't know what's going on here <laughs> oh yeah 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 i gonna, like it all i mean i love I hitting fun PRs. With all of it <laughs> i love i love hitting prs but uh yeah just I, I people enjoy going to the gym and working out and feeling like they're dying and i just don't no me too <laughs> It's like the faster I just want to be strong. With, yeah, exactly. Yeah. If I could the, take uh, a pill and be strong, I would never be in the gym. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that uh, can't you already do that? It's steroids. Mm-hmm. Did, yeah, we no. did a whole podcast about it <laughs> two days ago. <laughs> you still got to do stuff. You still got to yeah, do yeah, stuff. Yeah, you do. You do. Um, all right, we got a bunch of comments. Um, Crown of Iron, listening to this while pressing. Hey, there you go. Good stuff. Crown of Iron. Uh, Archipelago. Look at this guy in last week. I remember we talked about his, uh, we talked about his belt last week. <clears throat> How's the music? 
Oh, nice. <sighs> oh man. Ooh. What's this? Uh, what's this chap's name? Archipelago. Okay. Or archipelago um, for archipelago. our American listeners. Archipelago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, man, you're gonna have to uh, fix a lot of stuff. You got too much weight on the bar for one. Um, your chest is collapsed. You're looking straight down, which tends to pull the chest down. And then whenever you're coming up, you're driving your head up because your chest is down. You feel like you have to pull it back into extension. So when you come out, you already need to have your chest up. Um, you got too much weight on this bar. You're you're squatting more high than you are low. You're squatting closer to the lockout than you are to actual depth. Um, so take off a bunch of weight. Um, Get your chest up in the beginning, keep it up, knees out, bend over, and get your hips below your knee. If you're filming yourself and your hips are not below your knee, it doesn't count as a squat. So you gotta get to where you can hit depth consistently before you put any more weight back on that bar. Do you think it's his, his stance is too wide and it's actually stopping him from getting the depth? Um, his stance is a little wide, but that's not what's stopping him with depth. He's just, his, uh, his back is super soft and he's just not strong enough to squat this weight. So it's just a general note. Um, depth isn't something that you can kind of hone in on unless you have a relatively clear definition of it in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So if you're just kind of squatting and you're just like, oh, you know, that feels like depth, but you're not actually kind of pulling that out and then seeing what's actually happening, you know, from this third party perspective. Sometimes that's a coach. Sometimes it's, that's, you know, someone who lives with you who's just like, yeah, it kind of looks like depth or it's you watching your own videos. You have to be checking in on these things. Um, yeah. So these, there's a lot of good things to this where it's just like, you know, the stance, it's a little bit wide, but you have a good toe angle. You're shoving the knees out. You're trying to lean over. You know, you're keeping your gaze somewhat down. It's a little bit too down. Um, so it's not a it's not a complete train wreck, but the depth definitely is high. Um, so just I would just go back down to just the empty bar, run another expedited LP, um, start with the body weight squat, and then just figure out where depth is for you, man. Um, you have pretty long legs and a, a relatively shorter torso, so you're going to have to lean over more than you think. Um, but just take a ton of videos, even if you just kind of leave it running the whole time, um, and then just make sure you are actively aware of what you're doing. You need to get that crease of your hip right below the top of your knee. Yeah. Yeah, every, every single squat you do should be 100% repeatable as far as technique goes. Every squat, we, we strive for good technique, which means every single rep should look the same. Um, if you're just feeling for depth and just deciding I'm going to come up whenever it starts feeling heavy, then every squat's going to be different. Um, other than the, the, the uh, little bit of technique stuff like the chest and all that stuff, um, you have to be able to repeat every rep and make them look exactly the same. So go, go down and fix all that. Choice, and choice of music, I mean, most importantly about this, um, <laughs> Beethoven's Sixth Symphony. Was correct. <laughs> was yeah, correct. that was correct. <laughs> yeah. Well, at the gym, there's a lot of white guy blues going on and a lot of jazz, and um, so uh, it's like good stuff, know. basically. Yeah. 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 I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, next up, we got our old mate Tricky Trick six nine six nine six nine. Oh, I love this guy. Letting us know that he's deadlifting two hundred and forty pounds. That's not 240 pounds, 240 That's kilos. That's ki kilos, yeah. yeah. Definitely kilos. You know, I, I genuinely think that he um, he submits videos just to show off in front of people because oh, totally these does. look really, really good. <laughs> You're written on your heels a little bit, Trick. I would, I would make sure that you're thinking about keeping your armpits out over the bar. You don't want to pull onto your heels. So it's like if you're doing like a frame deadlift on a car, sure, go for it. Pull on your heels. Um, but like with a standard deadlift like this, you don't want that separation and everything to slide back. So you'll notice like your, your ball of your foot starts peeling up just a little bit. Um, think about kind of gluing that down to the ground, keeping your armpits out over the bar. Um, you'll be able to kind of get a better line to pull on your hamstrings, your glutes, and everything like that. You probably have a little more weight on here. Um, but otherwise, these are, these are a clean 240. I um I would argue that a big reason why his rock back is happening is because he's wearing soft sole Converse. I, I I would like to see him do this in lifters and see how his feet look. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like the bars come He was, his... you know what? I'll go ahead, Alex. The last deadlift video he was in, he was wearing lifters. So mm -hmm. I yeah. yeah, I like that was not a problem on the last one. Um, <clears throat> but like uh, most of the landmarks that we're looking for here are great. You're just kind of at their honing in stage. Um, but just make sure you know you're not being silly on programming and you'll be able to pull 350 one day. So what do you think about I would, that? Um, 
if I want to get real nitpicky on these, um, make your lockout a little more definitive. Some of those, um, like your after the second rep, you kind of just barely stood up and immediately went back down. I would get that lockout a little more definitive. Um, I think that's that. a I, that tends to be, or at least from what I see, it's a function of pulling on your heels. So if you pull on your heels, you have a hell of a hard time uh, getting a hard lockout. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, the bar seems to be bouncing off his shins as well. Did you guys sort of notice that? Like, it seems to come off his shins. Doesn't really matter. That's yeah. it. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, all right, tricky trick. Doesn't seem like he's here. Like, he definitely would have been shit posting in the comments. So, uh, in the live chat. So, he's definitely, he's probably working today or something. Um, Crown of Iron. Hi, Mick. Any indication of when Phase 3 NLP will be in the app? Uh, we're working on it right now, so um, I'm hopeful in the next couple of weeks uh, we're going to have advanced novice in there as well. So it's going to be cool. Um, uh, Amish, Amish, Amish B, Amish B. I don't know. It's Amish. Amish. Are you a Mennonite? Amish B. <laughs> are you a boy from Pennsylvania, my home state? Yeah. Represent, uh, man. Yeah. Well, I don't think Amish people are going to be watching the uh, Strength Club live stream YouTube. But, um, <laughs> this one is. <laughs> Or maybe he's on that gap year. Have you seen that gap year show with the Amish people where they, they yeah, yeah Rum they Springer? Just go insane. Rum Springer. Yeah. yeah, they just so go much. insane for an hour, like a year. Yeah. yeah, it's like, hey, go bone who you want. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, mm -hmm. And then decide but, if you want to go back to the Amish life. <laughs> seriously, they should do that before people get married. It's just like, all right. Apparently, their retention rate is very high. Yeah, yeah, they get it out of the system. Um, yeah. Uh, so anyway, Amish B, any tips for deadlifting with kyphosis? Uh, the answer is in the sentence. You just have to deadlift with kyphosis. You yeah. don't really have many options. Uh, if you're working with someone who has kyphosis, it's a different situation. Um, but like if you have it yourself, you just kind of have to make the best of the scenario. Um, if someone does have pretty dramatic kyphosis and you are working with them, you can modify their setup a little bit, get more of a frog stance, get the hips lower, give them a little bit of a better chance to get their upper back tighter. Um, or you can just accept the fact that their upper back is going to be rounded um, and just make sure that it's not going through a more severe range of flexion. So for people like that, um, like, oh, great, you know, you're going to be, you're going to try and squat the best you can, press the best you can, deadlift the best you can, or excuse me, bench, uh, but like the deadlift operating at like near 100 percent limits for them all the time it can just be more aggravating than not so it's a it's a because like kyphosis is such a huge term you know mm -hmm. it, it, it goes to extremes i have um, yeah my, one of my older clients um he has kyphosis um and uh he still has a real strong deadlift and rack pull um, mm -hmm. It hasn't slowed him down one bit. His squat's still real good. Um, he, his his upper back is just rounded in lockout. That's basically it. Yep. Just get up on that mic, Rossi. Oh, am I getting too far away from it? Yeah, you can probably just hold it under your chin if it's easier. Um, kyphosis is upper back like rounding, isn't it? Um, yes. Yeah, so there's there's two types of curves. There's a lordotic and a kyphotic curve. Kyphotic is the one that we're talking about, so rounding at the upper back. Um, lordotic would be like an accentuation of what we're talking about where we're trying to get low back extension. Um, so, you know, for kyphosis, like everybody has an amount of it, but I, just the term just means, oh, that looks weirder than it normally does. It looks more dramatic than it normally does. Um, for some people, it's so severe that they can't really hold a low bar position because as soon as they lean over, the bar will rocket up their back, right? Because it's just too round. Um, and then for other people, it's kind of at this middle point where they can still have a nice you know, squat position and then still deadlift. Um, but it takes a lot of workshopping, a ton of workshopping. Okay. Uh, Amish B said he's from Australia and thanks for the response. So there you go. Um, Tricky Trick 696969 has showed up in the comments. Uh, he said he just got married and oh. he's sitting around the pool at hotel. Oh. Congratulations, yeah. Trick. <laughs> and he's still make, making the show. And he's still, still making, making the plenty show, of yeah. small tricks. He's, he's, make plenty of genetically superior children. I know, yeah, true. I know we're on our honeymoon, but I got to get this podcast in. <laughs> he's like, babe. I think we've made it, guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and a bunch of people saying congratulations to Tricky. Um, Isaac Medina, may God bless your marriage for the rest of your lives. No, oh. nice, Isaac. Um, and Tricky also said that uh, his coach told him to ditch the lifters for his deadlift. Yeah, put the lifters back on. Play with it. I mean, I would rather you do deadlift slippers than converse, Trick. Yeah, so, like, slippers. if you get... Yeah, so, like, if, if your coach, for whatever reason, is just like, yeah, fuck the shoes, 
and that's something that you're going with at that point i would then get uh what's it called um deadlift slippers uh the reebok deadlift shoe it's pretty nice too it's like it's similar to a converse but it's just like incredibly hard at the bottom it's basically just a lifter without any toe drop um those are okay uh but i i don't think your pulls were so different between the video where we saw where you had lifters to this one where it actually makes that much of a difference i would just go with whatever keeps you on midfoot the best yep I personally don't like slippers. There's just something about not having arch support whenever I'm holding, you know, 400 plus pounds in my hands. Um, you know, I like my arches. Um, I just sure. imagine you having incredibly high arches, just like a high heel all the time. Oh, now. yeah, my, my, my foot looks like this. <laughs> my toes. Yeah, mine are, the type, mine are almost my perfectly toes flat. Are actually, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Tricky Trick said there's some deadlift shoes I found I might get those I think it's for a comp because I'm going to be competing soon I mean yeah like unless you're unless you're with how fast you've been progressing Trick like you you were not trying to you know eke out or min max that hard I would just go with whatever you're most practiced with and just stick with that oh he said I better go before my wife kills me (laughs) haha lots of love see you guys for the next one <laughs> yeah. his one wife, wife is capitalized as well. <laughs> For my wife, I'll drink, I'll drink some. Here's some diet coke to trick. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, Josh Ray asked, "Do you guys see comments posted on Facebook?" And the answer is yes. I can see those. We're actually live streaming to Facebook, Rusty. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. yeah. Look at cross, that. We're cross streaming. We're crossing it's the, the future. Um, the uh, Rip, Rip had uh, us delete everything, all social media for the gym. Did he just see that social? What was it? The social dilemma documentary on Netflix. I, I don't know. I don't know what it, what what it what, well what it is is he was tired of all the censorship going on, and I think he's seen some of it on his uh, Twitter page. So he's just like, "Fuck this." Yeah. Rip has a Twitter. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's Coach well, Rip more. <laughs> Damn, it was Coach Rip <laughs> Damn. Well, but he, he never put anything fun on it. It was just him adver- advertising stuff. So, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, Petter says, where is the Nordic press machine? I don't <laughs> even know what that is or means. The Nordic, Nordic press? I'm, look- press I'm looking it up right now. He's talking about Chase. <laughs> oh, right. Because he's a, he's a Nordic yeah, god okay, yeah. and he right. can press a lot. I was like picturing No, but Nordic is a machine brand, man. Oh, it's the Nordic it? hamstring curl. It's the best hamstring curl. Is the Nordic <laughs> hamstring curl? I tried them once, and never you, again. you made me really excited. I thought Nordic came out with the press machine. I was like, hell yeah, man! <laughs> well, I can see how excited you are there, uh, Alex. Here, uh, that shirt doesn't leave a lot to the imagination. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is always hard, man. It's always turned up. It's the lifestyle I like to live. <laughs> You know, now now that you pointed out his shirt, that's all I'm going to be looking at is a muscle shirt. <laughs> it's called a rash guard for those of rash us who do sports. Okay, okay. God. rash guard. <laughs> yeah, I have to be lubed up constantly so I don't get rashes. Uh, um, all right, let's let's check on another <clears throat> video. Uh, Jay Jerzak. <clears throat> Lifting in complete silence as well. Complete silence. Yeah. It's very color coordinated, old uh, Jay. Yeah. 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 Ooh. Yeah, you're trying to do these uh, low bar like they're high bar. You're trying to keep your chest straight up and you're looking straight forward. Um, I'm going to say it because I say it every time. Get some lifters. Um, you'll you'll like squatting in them. Um, you need to widen your stance a little bit. Get more of an aggressive toe angle. Um, point out just a little bit more. Now, this is the big thing that you're going to have to learn how to do. You're going to have to trust your low back. So once, that, once you start your descent, once your hips go back, you need to think with a big chest, with a hard back, point your chest to the ground. You're going to bend over way more than you're comfortable with, especially if you're used to trying to keep your chest up in the squat. Um, your hips are going to go back a lot more and you'll be bent over a lot more. That way you can start driving your hips out of the hole. If you're trying to keep your chest up the whole time, it's really hard to get any kind of hip drive, any hip drive that will help. So, um, yeah, you're going to have to switch a lot of things up to get this squat, um, a successful squat. So, you know, so Mick, I think this video is from a little bit ago. I'm actually working with Justin now. He reached out to me. All of those changes, Rusty, we've done. Yeah. We're working on it. Oh, excellent. Excellent. (laughs) Good. 
Mm-hmm. Right. Yes, and then the other good news is the color coordination is still very much on peak. <laughs> every time. Excellent. Nice. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that's good. Um, all right, Jersey. Thanks, mate. Just on that, we do have uh, priority form checks in the app if you um, if you don't want to wait the three to four weeks it takes to get your videos uh, on this live stream. You can actually um, buy a priority form check in the app, and Alex will uh, get back to you within about one to two days. Alex is actually right on it. Like uh, most of the ones you've been replying to within like a couple of hours, it's been uh, it's been pretty impressive. It's interesting because most people will send them in from the real world, America, at nighttime, which is daytime here. So we're right on it, basically. Yeah, it's during the work day. Um, but yeah, if you send that in, Justin actually did that too. Um, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Most of the time, it's under twelve hours normally. Unlike the long end, it can be twenty-four. So. Yep. Um. Uh, okay. Uh, Matthew Joseph uh, has left a few comments. I think we got. A, I think we got, have we got one of your videos today, Matthew. Maybe. Um, Alex, where are you at in Japan? From Jeff Riggins. Yeah, it's classified. I'm pretty cool. Um, no, but I'm on the I'm on the southern tip. Uh, it's called Sasebo. It's a it's a city of about like 250,000. Um, it's it's pretty awesome. Um, Nicholas N- Nert Nert Nert. Advice for a guy who doesn't enjoy eating. Eat anyway. You don't have to enjoy all of the things that you do. Yeah, that's that's like Rusty apparently answer. has been training for years and doesn't enjoy lifting. No, I'm with you, man. I hate every aspect of it, it, except it's, except getting stronger. It's, <laughs> it's something I have to do, but no, I mean it's it's true. I mean, you you can ask. Uh, you know, Bree criticizes me the most for this. I I don't eat a lot as much as I should. Um, that's why I haven't been hitting the um, numbers I've been wanting to hit, um, and I have to force myself to eat. And uh, yeah, I don't enjoy it all the time. Don't get me wrong, I like food, but to eat the amount that I need to eat, I need to force myself to do it. <clears throat> and uh, it's it's hard sometimes, but you have to do it anyways. So just um, just commit. Yep. Yeah, man, just uh, go look up some Rich Piana motivational videos. <laughs> uh, join the five percenter lifestyle. Um, unironically, get a mass scanner. So it's just like, if it's going to be the thing where it's just like, oh, I still need to drink fluid. Like I worked Mm -hmm. with some tech guys back in college who were like, yeah, I just don't have the time to eat. I just don't feel like eating, you know, just drink your food. Um, But what you're looking for is something that's not so incredibly calorie dense that it kills your appetite. So if you're just like, well, I need to add a piece of cheesecake to every meal for some godforsaken reason, and it just, you're not hungry for another four hours, that's not what you're going for. You're going for something that you can turn over really quickly so that you can stay hungry. Um, more activity tends to help a lot. Not saying like do an hour of cardio a day, but like go for a walk every once in a while. You know, find some extra shit in your house to do. Stay busy. If you're just sitting in the same place and doing nothing, you're probably not going to be that hungry. Yeah, go for a walk to McDonald's. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, I, I second the uh, get, get a mass gain or something with a lot of calories where you can just um, drink them um, and try and do it before bed. Uh, that's That helped me quite a bit. Hmm. A lot of people know people who were stationed in Sasebo, Alex, according to the comments. Oh, Jeff yeah? Riggins' mm, buddy, Matthew Joseph's brother. Um, yeah, the, open invitation for anybody within the next few months who can get to Japan illegally. <laughs> you could smuggle yourself on a, on a ferry to yeah, get come here. And, come and challenge me in Japan. <laughs> yeah, come and hang out. Yeah. Uh, B. Kalitri, I took 10 days off moving. Moving? <clears throat> Took 10 days off mo- moving. How much weight should I back off when I get back to it tomorrow? I don't think he meant moving. Or well, maybe he's been moving a lot. Um, Lifting? Was he that we tried to he hasn't today? moved. He hasn't moved for 10 what? days. So what yeah. should, Have you what been in bed rest? <laughs> so she hasn't lifted in 10 days. Let's just assume that's what she meant. Yeah. Um, just, uh, I don't know. Take up, Just pick up where you left off. I mean, 10 days yeah, isn't that I mean, much. it depends. Are you a 75-year-old woman? Yeah, you know, true. it's a different scenario. If, are you an 18-year-old yeah. boy? Who knows? Yeah. Um, so, like, it's, it kind of falls in the doesn't matter, does, it depends thing. This is kind of just maturity under the barbell. Uh, realize that a specific week of training doesn't matter. You're going to be training for many, many years. Um, so, we're like, oh, I took 10 days off. If I, don't, if I don't nail exactly my precise welcome back weights, the world's going to fall apart. It's mm-hmm. not going to undershoot it. Get in there uh, as aggressively as you can or as aggressively as you want to, but it's totally fine. Yeah. You'll probably be sore after that first squat workout. Uh, yeah, you'll live. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, Jeff Riggin said, Alex, I'll get there, let's hang, and we're going to crush some 12 ounce curls. There we go, mate. <laughs> Who knows if Jeff Riggins is Australian or American? No, if you're another Australian. I, I think he's an American. But um, uh, Nicholas Nert from before, appreciate the advice, guys. Also, Rusty, I dig the hell out of your shooting videos. Oh, thanks, man. Hmm. I haven't been able to do it much lately because ammo's so scarce. I actually just did an ammo count, and I'm like, ah, I should have planned for this. How, how many ammos <laughs> have you got left? Oh, I've got a lot, but whenever you shoot a lot, it's not a lot. Uh, you got to get in the airsoft, man. The true tactical operator. <laughs> What's airsoft? Those will, those, are, those will be banned, too, before long. I'm the sure. little BB guns. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Sakib, uh, Sakib Zulfikar, any thoughts on why and when to add Prowler into NLP for 50-plus individuals? Thanks. NLP, um, personally, whenever I have a client on NLP, I keep them on NLP and I don't do anything extra. I, I get them through NLP and as soon as things start changing, as, well, as soon as the bar starts slowing down, um, depending on who it is, if they miss a weight, and I start changing their plans, start getting out of LP, then I'll start adding some accessory stuff on their light day. Um, but generally, I don't add Prowler or anything like that until after LP. Especially so for uh, 50 and up, you have to be careful about how you titrate in conditioning work. Sometimes the prowler can really beat people up. Um, but it is per kind of designed in a way where it's concentric only, you know, and if you're monitoring it so even close to correctly, it won't really do too much to you. Um, but what I would recommend is consider where you're at. If you're just kind of a thin guy and you're like running and you're like, oh, I feel like I'm not in correct shape enough, hang out, remember your training career, even if you're 50, 55 is still going to be another 20 years. Um, but if it's something where, like, let's say that if you're teetering on obesity or you are an obese individual or you do need to lose some fluff, um, just add in like, okay, you know, once we're done with our workout, we're going to go walk on the treadmill with an incline for 10 minutes. Those things have a tremendous amount of return, you know? So like if you're in a condition, if you're, if you're in a state where you need conditioning work, you know, if you need it in the manner of like, we need a little bit of like a, a baseline cardio respiratory fitness that lifting isn't giving you, let's say that you are obese or close to it. Um, then in that case, I would honest, the prowler would be the last thing that I would do, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, if it's, if it's not to say bad, but if it's, if it's difficult baseline to start with conditioning, you can do a bike or recumbent bike, then the elliptical, then the incline treadmill, but even the incline treadmill for some people is a lot. So, uh, rusty check out freedom munitions, Steven Runberg. Okay, oh, hey, Steve, out, what's up, Steve? Uh, Steve's your buddy, isn't he? Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, Nicholas Nert, another question for you. I finally convinced my 60 year old father to give starting strength a shot, but he's very concerned about the squats making his elbow injuries flare up. Thoughts in SSB? Um, so if, if he has an injury that immediately low bar will flare up his elbow, um, high bar. Um, uh, the low bar isn't the end all be all. If you can't do low bar, don't squat. So try and get him to do low bar, get his elbows in a good position, his hands in a good position. Um, if it starts flaring up his tendonitis, go high bar for a while and uh, see, see, if, see how squats look doing that. As long as he's squatting, okay? Especially when at that age, he needs to be squatting. Yeah, yeah so when you're, when you're introducing someone, especially at that age, they have likely are not doing anything. Maybe they're doing a little bit of walking. The goal isn't, you know, to have an optimal scenario for them to win the game the goal is just for them to play the game the more bouts that you can have of them even entertaining it as a concept that's how you can get momentum and then get things rolling so you're not even consider optimal just as like a pipe dream fantasy so if he goes in there and he wants to fuck around with dumbbells and some machines cool you just need to get him to walk into the gym a few times you know once you can get that as a habit then you can start being picky like hey maybe instead of you know sitting on the recumbent bike we can go and try a leg press and then once he's comfortable with that you can go and try a squat it really depends on what his temperament is you know if you guys can be pretty frank with each other you can just tell him to stop being a baby and get under a barbell um but you know you got to deal with what you got to deal with yeah Carm, um Carm at the gym she um has she's real good with older people um and she uh her dad was really fighting on getting into the gym and he's you know obviously pretty you know very older he's older and uh he hadn't been doing anything she said you need to get in here you need to get in here he'd get in here and bitch him out. i don't even know why i'm here and she was having him do very simple things like hold a 10 pound plate and sit down on a box and then stand back up 
and it, she kept it low reps, low sets, have him push the prowler nice and easy, um, just little things like that. And then now he loves going into the gym. Um, he feels weird if he doesn't. He talks about how much he likes it. Um, and she has him doing doing workouts. So, um, yeah, just t- take it easy. Um, mm. Just get him in there. Make it a habit. I think it's a lot of it's about just getting confidence, you know, especially mm-hmm. with people who had lots of injuries and who are weak. They don't have a lot of confidence in their body and just doing little, taking those little steps. Um, mm-hmm. I think it builds up their confidence. Once they get the confidence, I think they'll be okay. Yep. Um, all right, let's push on with some more videos. Uh, Jonas143. Can we talk about the guy in the background first? Okay, let's, yeah, rewind that. I want to see this. That's me, actually. This is my <laughs> <laughs> Would that have been white-lighted at the, uh, the strength-lifting meet? Or? <laughs> yeah, I think it would. Yeah. That bar's a little high. He probably needs to get it under his chin before he starts pressing, but, I mean. <laughs> all right, anyway. Let's, that let's... lockout's weak. That lockout's weak. He needs to stand off. What's this guy's name again? Uh, Jonas. Jay Jonas. Oh, Jonas. Jonas? Yeah. Um, figure out what you're trying to do. So you're looking down, and it seems like you're trying to lean over, but the bar is in a very high bar position. So figure that out. Figure out what you're trying <laughs> to do. If you are trying to do a low bar, the bar needs to be moved down about two and a half inches. Um, so like Rusty was saying earlier, you know, you're going to reach across uh, on towards your other shoulder. On the far side, if you just kind of pull up and down a little bit, you'll find a bony ridge. You want the bar directly under that bony ridge. That's what you're going for. Okay, so if it's just up on your neck, it's not what we're looking for. Um, and then from there, you know, it's just kind of figuring out how to keep your spine straight. I'd be interested to see your deadlift to see if you can pull your back into extension at all. But what we're looking for is from bottom of your skull to your tailbone to be as rigid as humanly possible. We don't want to see any movement there. Okay, some movement can and will happen when things are heavy, but it doesn't need to happen now. So you're trying to make that entire thing uh, essentially just railed in and no movement. So right now you're just curving on the way down. So, Yeah, one thing that's interesting is right before you squat, when you get your breath, you get a big chest and your back goes super flat. And then as soon as you start squatting, you just release your low back and then it rounds out real hard. Um, another thing, eh, you need to set those safeties a lot lower. It seems like you're using those safeties as a measurement on how low you need to go. A, um, you're not hitting depth. Your your hip is really high, which you need to fix your back before you really worry about anything. But you need to also be squatting to depth. Um, your safety bars, the bar is actually touching the safety bars on every single rep. That's not what the safety bars are for. Um, you need to move those. Therefore, if you miss a rep, you can set the bar down. So um, lower your safety bars. Don't use those as a gauge on where you need to be stopping. And yeah, toe, toe angle as well. I think it's an issue here as well. Yeah, well, his his whole squat is is pretty rough, so yeah. he he needs to read the book. he needs to go back watch from the beginning. Videos. Yeah, watch some videos, read yeah. the book, um, and then uh, attack it uh, attack it again, and uh, yeah, get that back straight, man. You're gonna you're gonna wear your low back out doing that. Yeah. All right, thanks, Jonas. Send us another video. Uh, June's thirteen. This is definitely light for you. Um, your squats are high. They look high. Just cut the rocky music. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome, man. <laughs> Gray hoodie, rocky music. I yeah, like it. Yeah, I was like looking going. He looks like Rocky and it's like he's got the music yeah. as well. Awesome, um, yeah, you need to get your, uh, get your toes out a little bit more and get your knee angle a little more aggressive. Uh, get your knees out a little bit harder. All these squats are high, so you need to get your hips a little bit lower. Um, it seems like your chest angle isn't changing much, so you're going to get your hips back a little bit more. That will help you hit depth a little bit harder, but getting your knees out is going to allow all that to happen. So get your knees out, squat a little bit deeper, um, bend over with the weight. Um, everything else looks pretty decent. Yep. Yeah, I think that's that's answer. Okay, we'll get one more video, and then we'll get back to a few of the comments. Uh, Jay Petrie, I think, have you looked at his videos, Alex? Um, he's been sending in a bunch, so yeah, I think this is if this is going to be a squat, then yeah, he actually just sent in another priority one last night, right, so let's, let's probably skip, uh, move past that one. Yeah, let's skip this one. Um, Leo Sard, Disco Leo from Brazil. Oh, our Brazilian Santa, yeah. Oh, there's so much good stuff <laughs> in this video already, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let's see what kind of music. Do you want to take a guess what kind of music's playing before I put it on? Techno. It's yeah. going to be techno. Alex, you want to take, take a stab? I hope it's dead silent, and you just hear the pitter-patter of that gentleman in the back. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
it's, it's like some uh, pop music, I think. Yeah. Oh, what's this guy in the background about to do? Is he about to do some bucks, uh, jump squats or uh, gonna, box squats? I think he's going to jump on it. He's yeah, jump up something else. Box jumps. That's the word I'm looking for. Nope, nope. No, he's, nope. he's, no, he's like sitting that. down on it. Yeah. He's sitting down on it. That was the exercise. Uh-oh. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, the crunches. old crunches. Yeah. Nice. You're so happy with this, aren't you, Alex? You're like, oh, <laughs> this is something you do, isn't it, Alex? <laughs> No, I'm uh, a windshield needs- wipers guy. I don't do crunches. I, I, they hurt my back. Windshield wipers, those are those are my jam. Uh, all right. Anyway, let's uh, <sighs> let's get to Leo. Let's get to Leo. Yeah. I like horrible. these. Yeah. yeah, they're not horrible. I think I think he get get his back in a little more extension. Yeah. No, that's pretty flat. Never mind. I take that back. That first rep wasn't as flat as that second. Yeah, I really don't have much to say about these. These look pretty decent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all the landmarks are there. Some reps are kind of pulling on your heels a little bit, but otherwise, yeah, he's he's it's, it's jerking on the bar. Yeah, he's jerking on the bar just a little bit on that last rep. That one was a lot smoother. Yeah, these are solid deadlifts, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If there is so, rest assured, if there was stuff that we had to correct, we would be focusing on you and not the gentleman in the back trying his best. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's just giving him good karma. Really, he's just he's just pushing it out. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, good work, Leo. That is a beard. We've got it confirmed. Yeah, that's confirmed the most now. direct evidence now. Yeah, that's, uh, that's definitely a beard. <laughs> Way that, to go, man. That mask Fuck. is doing nothing. <laughs> um, That's awesome. Josh Ray from Facebook. Hey, our first Facebook question. Uh, I get extremely lightheaded when I power clean. Any advice? We have to see your bracing beforehand. Um, it's an so, like, for some people, uh, a lot of times they will either... They will over breathe at the bottom. They won't really get into a full brace. They'll try and like breathe through the clean because it's athletic and explosive. And a lot of times, just the blood the the blood pressure spike of having to catch a heavy weight on your shoulders after not being braced at all can sometimes cause a little bit of lightheadedness for people. Um, for other people, honestly, it could just be standing up pretty quickly. In that case, walk on the treadmill a little bit after your workouts, and it probably should sort itself out in a few weeks. Uh, or go to the doctor. Uh, is another you know there might be something else going on so you know that's true do you have if you have like a giant tumor growing out of your head (laughs) or if you started to see new colors in radio waves (laughs) then Um, Jeff Riggins Rusty what's your height and weight you're looking wide big dog is that a compliment I think that's a compliment that's a huge compliment yeah I've been trying so hard to get to 200 he um, meant the I'm chin was looking wide, man. Oh, my chin was looking wide? We need to do this. No. Does this thing still work when people do this? <laughs> no, um, I'm um, 5'7", about uh, 188 is my average right now. So, well, I was hoping by the end of the year I'd get to 200, but uh, that ain't going to happen, I don't think. Mm. What's your training been like recently, man? Training was going good, and then um, I started having some, uh, some pretty bad low back issues. Uh, my squat, My squats were getting pretty high up there um so me and um nick decide i'm going to take a big step back and do some stuff to fix my low back problems um i'm pretty sure i have a bulging disc and it kind of flares up every now and then um and i sometimes confuse that with sciatica but everything else is going good um can't wait to start squatting heavy again honestly um but it'll probably be another month before i'm actually pring again so you're in an upper body hypertrophy block now? <laughs> I am. Nice. Yep, I'm sick. Upper body sick, bro. <laughs> those just dumbbells. Trying just, just, just trying to get those jacked. dumbbells. That, that, that <laughs> w fucking uh, getting into it. Um, Jay Russo, guys, could you tell us a little on how your platform test went for the SS certification? And I want to pref- preface preface this by let's keep this short because I think we've, we've talked about this before, I think, and it's a lengthy conversation and we're... Struggling for time. I mean, the, the the platform process. If 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 you go in and you, uh, I don't know how much it is now to go for it. Is I don't know if it's a hundred or two hundred to go for it. Um, but basically, you're you're going through the exact same thing everybody else in the seminar is going through, except for there's going to be more eyes and more focus on you and less help. Um, the the coaches will be watching you coach someone through every lift, and um, 
if you mess up just a little bit, they're going to let you know. Um, you need to have it down to a pat on how to teach the method. They, you need to be able to teach the method as good as any other coach in that room. Um, so as long as you can do that, it's, it's easy breezy. Um, whenever I did mine, I was at a home field advantage, so I just felt like I was at another day at work. So it wasn't that big of a deal for me. But if you get uh, nervous with people watching you and critiquing you, then um, you need to get past that pretty quick. Yeah, this may this may not be the job for you if you tend to get nervous with people, a lot of people yeah. around you, and a lot of people actively questioning your opinions. You know, because like when if you're coaching a random person, you know, expect like even if you have an SSC, and then this person's like, okay, I'm going to pay this agreed amount of money for you to run me through all the lifts. Like that person is still going to have uh, some amount of like a uh, suspicious airs about it because they want to know that you know what you're talking about. So if you're super nervous about it, this may not be the, the move for you. Um, Rusty, what, what he was saying, the most important sentence was know how to teach the method. There is a discrete method. I did not know that the first time, and I knew what the lifts should look like, and then I knew how to get someone to that lifts my way, and I didn't know there was a series of hyper-specific things that they wanted me to touch on before getting to that point. So essentially the first time it was like, yeah, you did the thing, but you didn't do the thing. It's like, damn. Went back, talked to other SSCs about it, figured out, you know, hyper precisely what we needed to do, and then came back and knocked it out of the park. Um, but a uh, board exam was way more fun than the platform, I would say. For sure. <laughs> Your definition of things that are fun is, uh, yeah, is, weird. is quite weird. curious, Alex. <laughs> Just a happy weird. guy. I love the board exam. I wanted, I was like, I had another three hours of me, easy. Once that was over. <laughs> yeah, I called all the exam the the proctors quitters. I was like, can't believe you guys are leaving so soon. Um, so just, what do you think about doing the seminar just as a uh, not doing the platform exam, just to get a bit of sort well, of uh, experience on on what it's all about? Well, I mean, well, that's what the majority of people that's what the majority of people that go to seminars are doing. They're just wanting to learn. Hmm. Um, they're not trying to become a coach or anything like that. They they just want to know what what's going on with the method and. Whenever you teach the method, turns out you're learning a whole bunch, especially if you haven't done it before. Yep. Um, but yeah, I, I, the very first seminar that I went to, I, I was just an attendee, and that was three, four years ago. Four years ago? No, it was longer than that, five. Um, and I was just there to just to watch. Um, so was that the one that you were at, Mick? Yeah. Yeah, we, we did one together. Was that five years yeah. ago? Jesus. Was it five? I don't think it was that it was one. Five before, was it was five or six. It was a while back. It was a while back. Yeah. Anyway. But um, yeah, that that one I just I was just attending it. Um, I knew I wanted to be a coach, but I wanted to see what everything was about before I, I committed to that job. So yeah. I think auditing is the move. Mm hmm. Yeah. yeah, true. yeah I would yeah. definitely recommend auditing. Yeah. yeah if yeah. you're confident in your coaching ability and you're like, yeah, I I know I can make on things on model, and you just kind of need to see exactly what's going to happen, I would recommend auditing. Mm hmm. All right, Jeff, hopefully that answered your question. Oh, no, that was Jay, Jay Rosso. Uh, M. Huseman. I know you're going to be happy with this guy's Jim Alex. Look at all those cables and things. Yeah, man. He was the guy with the cool uh, lifters, too, from the squats. Yeah, he was, yeah. Mm hmm. What's his name? Yeah. He uh, M. Huseman. Huseman. Um, Huseman. Uh, the the you're jerking on these um, on these deadlifts. You're not really squeezing your back into full extension. And then whenever you see your your slight jerk going up, watch your low back. Your low back gives out because you're not fully ex in full extension. You're not squeezing the bar off the floor. You're trying to jerk it off real fast and um, hope for the best. So take your time setting your back harder. Push your belly between your legs. Squeeze your chest up a little bit harder. Take your time doing that step and then push the floor away. Don't try and explode off the floor. Push the floor away, nice smooth drag all the way up. Um, these, aren't, these aren't bad, you're just losing your low back because of, because of your jerking on the bar and not setting your low back enough. These are way better than the last time. This was tremendous mm -hmm. improvement, Huseman. Yep. Um, so uh, make sure that all of the plates, you'll feel that click. Make that click happen and then get tighter for another half a second and then pull, okay? Um, so you're getting an amount of tight to the bar on like the first few plates or even just the tiny plates possibly. And then you're trying to pull the bar. There's that click and then the whole thing's moving. Make that click happen and then get tight to it. Yep. 
So the feedback is don't jerk, don't jerk it off too fast, Rusty. No. Yeah. 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 yeah you want to take your time. Slow. Nice yeah. and slow. It's not fun if you just try and hurry up. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Mike Too Swole that we had on last week was doing the belly bench last time and uh... <laughs> this better be a press my man oh man yeah no oh. yeah I wanted to th- see a 385 press today <laughs> apparently not yeah. Mike kind of swole <laughs> sick burn I think the upper back could be tighter. If you're going to do all black outfit with white socks, you got to pull the white socks up much higher. They got to be like right under your fucking knee. You can't show all that off. Um, but yeah, so I think it's kind of an artifact of your grip um, that you're, you're going to be inherently pushing up on the bar. Um, your wrists are really bent. Your thumb is on the other side of your fingers. Um, I would see if you can wide it up, aim your fingers out to the sides like this. See if that gives you a little bit more purchase with your wrists. That way you can kind of clamp down and around it a little bit better. And if that doesn't work, you can keep that same configuration but drop the pinky off or the ring finger off. Just keep a few fingers on it. I think both of those are better than getting completely under it um, if you have to. But uh, focus on squeezing your chest up a little bit harder. Uh, If someone was standing right in front of you the entire time during the squat, even at the bottom, they should be able to see your sternum. If it's rounding and collapsing down and only showing at the floor, the upper back is too soft. Um, but otherwise, I think these are really good. A little bit on your toes, but that's the yeah, same his, thing from the upper back. Yeah, his knees are a little soft. Yeah, his knees are a little yeah. soft in the bottom. That, um, that was going to be do you my think that's, cr- Do you think that's coming from the upper back, or where do you think that's coming from? Um, I, it's probably a byproduct of it, but I'm not entirely convinced if he had a um, harder back if they wouldn't be soft in the bottom. Um, so normally whenever your, your low back gets soft, your hips – of course, your hips are – decent it's just your it's just your upper back but normally your hips will kind of kick in a little bit and everything will shift forward um i'm not necessarily seeing that so that's why i think that his knees are just soft he needs to lock, mm. lock his knees um over his toes hard knees man Keep we've missed hard. these knee nazi comments in the last couple of weeks not a lot of knee discussion <laughs> that's very true yeah uh thanks i'm Mike. back <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Too swole. Keep sending videos in, man. We we like it. Um, Mosswood. Oh, I didn't know. There we go. Oh, this could be anything. Okay, thank God. <laughs> I forgot to check these again today, <laughs> and it was, just a, it was just a black screen. <laughs> Okay, going back to the knees, um, you are flying through these. You've got to slow down, man. Um, there's no way you can perform a nice, tight squat just slamming to the bottom. That bar is moving all over the place. Um, you need to slow down quite a bit. Make sure you are nice and tight. Get that big, deep breath and squeeze your abs. Um, knees go to the toes, and then they got to stop, and your hips got to go back. You're going to bend over more than you want to with that big chest. You're also looking straight down. Get your gaze out a little bit more. Um, you want to, your gaze about six feet, eight feet in front of you, somewhere around there. Um, but you've got to slow down, man. These these squats are all over the place because you're just trying to get through them as fast as possible. You want quality reps, not fast reps. Um, so you've got a lot of things to fix. Yeah, I, I would just emplace an artificial tempo on yourself. Just pretend that all of your squats need to have a three count tempo. If you think that this is like a normal tempo make it five count frankly and then Mm -hmm. it will probably level out to like a two second descent what we don't want is for the bar to get momentum imparted to it on the way down okay so you Mm -hmm. can drop fast enough that the bar is actually accelerating more than it needs to right so we want to control it on the way down kind of fight it the entire way so that you know when he's saying a nice tight squat that's what we mean like when you're at the bottom you're at your strongest position you're not trying to like catch a weight that you're not prepared for um, yeah. So yeah, all the stuff Rusty said, wind up the stance, uh, stay tight, do everything super slow. Yeah. You, you got to think, man, if uh, that bar, like you said, is artific- is going down more than quicker than it needs to, then at the bottom of the squat, you're not just turning around 225 pounds, you're turning around, you know, probably 300 pounds. So if you stay tight, it might feel like counterintuitive. Well, if it's moving fast, then it's, it's better. If you stay tight, and move it a little bit slower, you're managing energy a lot better. So, um, yeah, you got to just uh, take a step back and, you know, slow down. Yep. 
Stephen Liu. Oh, cool got, setup, my man. Yeah, man. He's got the old... Uh, what are those things? Saw horses. It's saw horses, that's it. Yeah. yeah. So you don't want to take a guess of the music before we... Uh... It's just a lot of heavy breathing. Heavy breathing. <laughs> he actually has a collar mic on for this. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> it's right here. He's just yelling into it. Scared. I'm scared about this last rev. Yeah, well, I would take the sweater off, my man. I would take yeah. the sweater off. It's moving around. The bar is moving around too much. Um, yeah. Putting it on in between sets, you, you know, that's totally fine. Um, but with this, like, you can physically see the bar starting to shift up. It's probably a little bit high to start, and you're pushing it up through the descent in combination with that thicker, loose material. You want that bar right on your skin, you know, as close as you can to it, just with that thick kind of cottony shirt if you can. Um, but... Otherwise, um, I think this is coming from the upper back. You know, the, the depth is starting to crawl. It's, it's slowing down that much as you get right towards the bottom because the upper back position is not hard enough. Um, mm -hmm. So see if you can sort that out. Remember, keep pointing your, your sternum up at your little plate tree that you made in front of you, which is really cool, by the way. It is. Um, and hopefully that'll sort itself out. Yeah. Um, I would also, and this might be a byproduct because you're losing your chest, but your elbows are also dropping really hard. Take it from me. Don't let that happen. You will develop elbow problems. So um, focus on where your elbows and your back are a little bit better um, and try and control your weights a little bit more. Like I said, that bar is kind of shifting all over the place. Um, you're a strong guy. Um, get rid of the sweater. See if you can stay a little bit tighter. Yep. Okay, Stephen Lou. Thanks for the video. Tenno Steel. Power clean. <laughs> Please. No. Uh, these guys. aren't bad. It's pretty solid. Yeah. Yeah, these aren't bad at all. Um, I think you could get your chest up a little bit more, get your shoulder blades back and down. Um, uh, your your low back's nice and flat. Um, yeah, I don't I don't hate these, man. Yeah, so whenever you're sitting your back, when you're you know you're watching your own videos for your review, you should still see movement. If it just kind of looks like you know you have to poop and your face got really red and nothing changed position, you're probably not setting your back as much as you could. Even yeah. if it's small, there should be a change in position of something, right? So even if your sternum moves up a little bit, your mid back goes down, your lower back goes down, something. Um, you know, you're trying to get yourself in the best pos possible position, best extended position, so that when it does collapse, it's not terribly rounded. Because yeah, yeah, it yeah. will collapse when it's heavy enough. But if you're just mm -hmm. kind of starting in, you know, and that not not to say relax, but you're getting tight and not extended, you know, it 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 can get worse than I think it needs to be. You know, when it does yeah. Start uh, what I've been telling people is make it make it really hard in the bottom so it's easier up top. If your chest yeah. is more set in the bottom, that's less work for you to pull yourself into extension in a position your body does not like to pull itself into extension. That's why you see a lot of people get stuck with their chest. They can deadlift all the way up, and then right before lockout, they can't get their chest up and their shoulders are rounded. It's because they didn't set their back hard enough in the bottom. So you want to um, do that early so you don't have to worry about it late. Yep. All right, Tenno Steel. Thanks, man. Strong deadlift there, son. Good job. Um, too many hands. I think this guy uh, jumped on the comments a couple of weeks ago. Asked how to submit some videos, so there you go. That's oh, a single. I love it. <laughs> Amazing. Not a bad looking deadlift. I would get your hips a little bit higher. It's still pulling around your knees. Um, if you don't want to get your hips higher, point your toes out a little bit more, shove your knees out. I think you're, yeah, I think they're straight on right now. So aim those out, shove your knees out a little bit more. Um, otherwise, I think this is a totally fine single. This is like an opener for a single and you're a little bit on your toes. I think mm -hmm. fixing the stance will help that. Um, so like that said, if you are trying to calibrate in an opener, you could probably take another five pounds on this and still be good for two more. 
Mm-hmm. Yep. All righty. Uh, yeah, that's it. Got through the videos. Excellent. No more there questions. A bit of shit posting in the comments, but uh, it's all all been pretty good, fellas. Welcome back. Did you talk about Biden at all? Did you talk about the laptop at all? Uh, I think someone said someone said something about it. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> shit, no, I, I gave really, you all homework and you wouldn't do it. Didn't really, didn't really uh, kick off man. as much as we would have liked. But uh, yeah, tune in for the after hours show. Where, uh, I'm imagining we'll start the, uh, running the alt right barbell club. Yeah. <laughs> Next time, let's talk about the fraud in the voter system. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's. I, I, yeah. I can only imagine how how much commentary there is at the Wichita Falls Athletic Club in the evenings at the moment. I mean, it must just be... Do you ever just get tired of it? You're just like, oh, I just can't deal with another night of... of Constant I'm conversation. I'm not tired of it. I'm just tired of life. That's what it <laughs> tired is. Tired of life. tired of everything. Yeah. Rusty, you know what you got to do? You got to really take a step back for this upper body hypertrophy block you're on and just have <laughs> fun, man. You just got to enjoy it. <laughs> you just gotta lighten up a little bit, enjoy it, do some abs, do some delts. I'll start wearing some muscle shirts. Yeah, yeah man. Some Under Armour mm-hmm. skin tight muscle shirts. <laughs> start wrestling some dudes. Just oil up. Just <laughs> listen. Stay out of my private life. All right. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, Petter in the comments has asked, "Where can I join the alt right barbell club?" I, mean, uh, I have a link in the. We have a link in the description yeah. of my website. You're here, man, this is it. Uh, this is. Uh, yeah. mm-hmm. We're about. We're yeah, I've weeks been. Away. I've been calling my business that as a joke since day one. <laughs> since day one. Of oh this man, operation. you're gonna get canceled, dude. You're gonna get canceled mm-hmm. by the alt left barbell club. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't you think can. That's uh, a thing. You can call my. If you email on my website, there's a link to HR. You can submit complaints to me also. <laughs> You know, I don't I'll think filter that, them back to myself. I don't myself. think there is such a thing as the alt left barbell club, Rusty. I think it's. Uh, I think it's. Well, uh, that's our CrossFit. body weight fitness, is what that is. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, called awesome. CrossFit. Hey, there you go. Uh, uh, they get offended by everything now, so I do. I do. So, Rusty, where can people find you online if they want to uh, talk on, to you about ammunition? Instagram? Or what's my yeah. Instagram handle on? <laughs> on instagram rust underscore strength underscore training that's it find and me there we found out last week or the week before that there's actually someone with a more difficult instagram handle than you and that is phoebe oh yeah yeah hers is fenelope seven like good, oh. good luck good luck trying to spell that yeah mm-hmm. yeah. yeah yeah the mix of phoebe and penelope to create a new <laughs> <name>. <laughs> yeah. and Alex, i have been a uh, little more active on my uh coaching one so what's he coaching there we go man that's the coaching one. Oh, that's the coaching I have one. A private, I have a private one. That. What's the private if can, one? Yeah. If you can find it, you can find it. Come on, man. Damn. Is that where all the is that where all the pump work is? <laughs> that's, yeah, that's where, that's where I'm actually one? showing my upper body development. All the last, the, the yeah. last thing I saw before I deleted Instagram was you lying on top of a motorbike, half naked. Oh, yeah. And yeah, yeah, uh, that's, Jeff, that's Jeff was taking a photo of you. I don't know why, but... Uh, yeah. I told him to. That's for the cooking series. It'll be out. That's in the next video, actually. <laughs> Poor um, Jeff. I, I can only imagine the things you have to ask him to do, Rusty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a hard person to live with. Yeah. I, I I'm bet. a hard person to live with. Yeah. Uh, and Alex, people, where can people find you if they want to get uh, coaching? Or... Fortunately, I am not on Instagram. I do do online coaching. Um, so if you want to argue with me about programming or find out about that, I will have a link in the description for it uh, to join the Alt Right Barbell Club. So there you go. <laughs> it's going to become a thing, like the Proud Boys. The Proud Boys started as a joke, and it became a thing. So uh, I, we... Proud Boys are still a joke. <laughs> Everything's a joke, man. I think the people who are in Proud Boys don't think that though. Yeah, that's because they're incels and they take things very seriously. Mm, yeah. I think well, the only thing that's not a joke, I think the most noble pursuit, if anyone can guess. It's bodybuilding. It's completely untainted <laughs> by politics. Every other area of life, from movies to comedy to art to cooking, there's politics. Bodybuilding, none of it. None of it. No politics in bodybuilding at It's just all. dudes being dudes. Yeah. <laughs> oiling, oiling each other up and wearing speedos. That's exactly That's just, what uh, it is. Yeah. With yeah. fake tan. Yeah. Fake tanner. Yeah. I don't think they're allowed to wear tan anymore. I think that, didn't they? There, wasn't there some sort of blackface controversy? So no, those like guys that. got kicked out. You can you can tan as hard as you want. Oh, yeah. really? Oh, I thought good. that for yeah. a while they were only tanning their bodies, but they were leaving their face white. That's almost That's... worse, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's the opposite of Trump. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. Well, on that note, <laughs> thanks, fellas, and uh, thanks for everyone who submitted videos and left comments, and uh, we'll catch you all next week. All right, see you guys.